So those people, instead of doing TPN, because TPN is the last resort for burn injury patients, mainly because remember, sugar is a source of bacteria, so those people you don't do that for. As soon as they have a return of bowel sounds, you're going to put in a dog uh tube and feed them. Okay, because you, and they get high calorie, uh, high protein uh, foods. So if you give them, they usually get double strength two feedings instead of regular two feedings because they need the calories. Sometimes you'll actually have to put burn shakes down there. Burn shakes are very high calorie. Sometimes we use them for patients who are um, malnourished who don't eat because it has almost three times what you get in one insure as far as calories, fats, and that kind of thing. So burn shake, they call them that for a reason because that's what we mostly use them for, but you can also use them for other patients. But the caloric intake and what patients need from it is far greater than what you get from regular two feedings that we have available. So as soon as you have, but you have to wait till they have bowel sounds returned, otherwise they end up with the illness. That kind of goes along with that. You have to look at electrolyte imbalances, and remember hemoconcentration first, and then hemodilution is the second phase. So potassium goes up during the first phase, sodium goes up during the first phase, those things are gonna be decreased on the second side. So you gotta kind of look at some electrolyte imbalances that happen with your patient. But the major thing is, is look, estimating how much body surface area burn, making sure they have adequate fluid resuscitation. That's gonna be key as far as looking at a burn patient telling you what, what characteristics, because there's a box in your book about the burns, what do you see in them? Can you tell if a patient has a superficial versus partial thickness versus full thickness, and the characteristics of those things that you see with that. Okay. So that's the burns in a nutshell. But that's on the, you do have um, PowerPoints that cover all that stuff again. Like I said, we'll talk about it again next week too. Um, then the other part of that is we have renal stuff. And renal stuff, I don't know why we have to talk about prostate in this class. I talked to you all about prostate in the other class. So we ain't going to have it in here. Mm -hmm. um, my other class doesn't have it, so I have to talk about it in their class. And that's not an acute process, so it irritates me, but anyway. <laughs> right. But acute renal failure is the big one, okay, when you talk about renal stuff. Um, these other things are not as much. So that re acute renal failure is the big piece that goes along with that one. Now, if uh, trauma is kind of easy, when you think about what's happening with a patient with renal trauma, about 20% of your blood volume is in your kidneys at any given time. So 25, 20 to 25% of your cardiac output is in your kidneys. That's why they're so sensitive to hypotension. When they don't get blood flow, that's why they have a problem. So when you have a patient who has renal trauma, you look for hematuria, yes. But you also look for changes in their vital signs because if they have something that happened there, low blood pressure, those types of things can happen with your patients. Um, but hematuria is probably the giveaway that you see that goes along with that. Then we have a few things about cancers, also something that is long term. Well, we have to talk about that again. Uh, <laughs> but patients who have bladder and kidney cancers, the main symptom you see with it is painless intermittent hematuria. So pretty much you know, that's, the, that's what, because to me, I don't know why we have this in my section of this, because it's madness. Most of those diseases are slow growing, not having a person that presents with a problem, and therefore, why we have it in here, I don't know. But um, patients who have bladder and kidney cancers, painless intermittent hematuria is the most common thing you see associated with it. By history, patients smoke, okay. or you have people that have been exposed to dyes and chemicals in their jobs. Those are the people that have the most of those types of cancers. But painless intermittent hematuria. And if you have a patient who has kidney cancer, you may also be able to see, um, you can actually palpate the mass. Bladders, you won't be able to do that, but the kidneys, you sometimes can actually palpate the mass if it's large. Then we have renal artery occlusion or nephrosclerosis. Yes, that is one you see. Sometimes we have a patient who has persistent hypertension and you can't figure out why. You know, no other risk factors, their normal weight, all this kind of stuff. We can't figure out why this keeps happening to the patient. Sometimes it's because, remember, the whole process of atherosclerosis is not only happening in your coronaries, it also happens in every other arterial system you have. And so sometimes we have patients who are resistant and we try it. You're on six different blood pressure medications and you are still hypertensive. You need to do a renal arteriogram and if it's sclerosis, you go in and open it up just like you do with the coronaries. 
Sometimes that will resolve the whole problem, but about 30% of the people, even if you do that, will end up being hypertensive. But sometimes that's what it is. And that's, it's always the last thing stops to check. But it, why it happens is, is if you have narrowing in the renal artery, the kidney itself is not being perfused fully, and all it does is activate renin angiotensin aldosterone. That's happening all the time. So it's like a dog chasing the tail. You have um, the release of renin, which is going to have with the aldosterone. Aldosterone raises your so as sodium goes with that. So as the sodium level goes up, then you're going to get fluid, increases vascular volume. Then you have angiotensin 1 converting to angiotensin 2, both potent vasoconstrictors. So all it does is raise your blood pressure continuously. So that's why even you can get a patient meds forever, and it's never going to change anything. So we have to just go and find out if they have an occlusion there. We can go in and open it up. And like I said, 70% of the people will be cured. No other blood pressure medicine ever. But 30% of those people still continue to have a problem. What we do know is that a lot of times their blood pressure is lower at that point, but it's still, they still are hypertensive. And, um, but the big one is acute renal failure. You got to know the phases know the causes and talk about some of the things that happen during the times that the patient is having those things. So pre-renal, intra-renal, post-renal are the causes. So pre-renal is something that happens outside the kidneys. You've had that already, hemorrhage, septic shock, all those things. Those are things that are not happening in the kidney themselves. Intra-renal are those, are those things that happen in the kidneys. So that's contrast diet, medications, those types of things antigen antibody responses for the blood transfusion. All of those things are something that's destroying something that's happening in the kidney. And then post-renal is some type of obstruction. For guys that would be prostate, if we've had stones, if we had some type of trauma, those are kind of things you're talking about what happens with your patient. Then you have to look at the phases that happen with your patients uh, when we talk about renal failure. And it's only acute side, not chronic. Okay. So you have that onset of symptoms that the patient has. You have the oliguric phase when you see urine output less than 400. Then you have the diuretic phase when they actually have start have some return of urine, and then you have the recovery phase. So those are you think about what's happening in the phases, what lab values you see in the phases, what things you need to monitor the patient for. Um, one of the the issues that we sometimes have about patients who have acute failure and what we miss the gamut of taking care of patients is that even though you have a resolution of symptoms in a patient and their numbers start going back in the right direction, patients who have acute renal failure need to be monitored anywhere from 18 months to two years. How many patients do you see? They might go to the nephrologist one time and then wonder why two years later they're in, in chronic renal failure. And it's because they don't do the monitoring piece that goes after it. You need to look at glomerular filtration rates, look and see if they have protein in the year and all that kind of stuff continuously or at least periodically for the next two years because that's the vulnerable period when a person can end up in a chronic renal failure and then end up on dialysis. So that's what you don't want to happen to the patient. That's the nutshell. We are going to cover it next week. Don't freak out. All right. Because I know y'all going to study today, so that's cool. You're all good. Any other questions about stuff that's going to be on the test before we go? Oh, we're getting that, but we have to walk with that sheet. Okay. You don't need that sheet, though. Oh, we we'll need the sheet. <laughs> oh, oh, thank God. Maybe like regular right that. What sheet? <laughs> <laughs> the special sheet <laughs> that we have last <laughs> test. Oh, no, that, was, that had to do with that content there. Yep. It'll be regular Carbon, stuff this yes. time. Oh, okay. do, you know, do you know the chapters? I know it's 31. Which chapters? Four, six, six, seven. Chapter 31. Six, seven. HIV is in chapter 15. You don't have HIV. Oh, it's in the outside, though. No, no. 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 You don't have HIV in the Oh, it's because okay. all the outlines are the same for every class. Oh, okay, okay. So we, oh. Some people say I'm chapter 30. I'm the only people, I'm the only, that's like I'm the only person that says that the HIV and Nobody else does. I think it's it's a chronic disease anymore. It's not an acute process. Chapter mm -hmm. uh, 30 is on the So 30, 30 is, is uh, assessment, so you need to know some lab values because that's what you had to know. What is, that's where you, all your lab values are. Uh -huh. okay. And then it's going to be... Definitely 31. <laughs> 30, 31. And then GI is... Where is it? Four. 
because there's GI stuff is spread out. So this stuff is in different chapters. The pancreas stuff is in 44. And then the GI bleed is probably in 42. I think somebody said 47. 47 is in his kidneys. That's not septic. They said 67. Oh, 67? 67 was shot. Yeah, that's going to be a discussion. Chapter <laughs> in. It's on the board. You wrote everything on the board. Okay. I know. I know what you need to know. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I also said 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 thank you. Well, why not be sure from the teacher? Kim, I put the page number. Yeah. Uh, clarification. Uh, we did sepsis today, but that's not going to be part of the assessment. Yeah. You see what you're talking about? She has. You see how hard it is? Oh, wait. I need to show in the right way. Okay. Right okay. Right okay. Right okay. Did everybody fire that? I knew what was going to be on the test up there. Y'all never believe. Okay, they were in here in the chapter, so. It's chapter 30, 31. We can do it. It's every section under GI. Okay. How many chapters are there? Seven. You got seven. Okay. okay. Then it's going to be 30 and 31, which is hematology. And six to seven seconds. No, she just said that's not no. going to be there. Okay, I didn't hear. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. Also, 67, no. Because we just took a test we today. Just took the quiz. Oh, okay. we took the quiz oh, no. for chapter 67. Uh, yes or no? Would have been fine. Huh? A no would have been nice. Sorry. Sufficient. Some I got to give you a hug. I didn't mean to be like no so loud to me. Because I was talking to you. I'm sorry. I didn't hear. Gotta give a hug? No. <laughs> <laughs> because I hurt her feel. I hurt her feelings. I don't want. No, no. I have to touch something. How about the big one? Okay.